Well, now we're going to take you on an extended walk through the Alfama, the old section of Lisbon. Strolling through Alfama is one of your great experiences in coming to Lisbon, so don't miss this opportunity. It's a real family, old-fashioned residential neighborhood. Lots of staircases, it's up on a hill, and people are friendly here in the Alfama. Great time to come is late in the afternoon, early evening when folks are out socializing, visiting, shopping. And it's generally a pedestrian zone. There's a few motor scooters and mopeds, of course, but most of these lanes, as you can see, are quite narrow and cobbled and just ideal for strolling. Alfama goes from the castle on top of the hill down to the Cathedral of Say and has many little lanes that will be taking you to inside that circle area on a wonderful walk. This gives you a quick idea of the lanes and alleys and staircases we'll be taking you through coming right up. A map helps, but part of the fun here is follow your nose and just get lost. Starting out at this scenic terrace with the view of St. Vincent Church in the distance, this panoramic terrace is a great place to take your photographs and get the overview of the rolling hills covered in the old buildings of the Alfama with a view of the beautiful waterfront down below. Fortunately, you don't have to walk up the hill to begin your explorations because there are these wonderful old trams. They go from the heart of downtown right up the hill and will bring you to that terrace. You can get out, enjoy the view, and then start walking down. A major staircase street will bring you from this terrace right down into the heart of Alfama. The Alfama is the old town, the old residential neighborhood of Lisbon. Walking around in the Alfama is really an amazing experience. A whole series of narrow lanes and staircases and local people out living their life in the streets and just having a nice time, enjoying each other's company. Kids are out playing, the old folks are out walking, and it seems like everybody has to climb up and down the steps. For those in good condition who love ancient neighborhoods, Alfama is absolute heaven to explore. Best seen during the day when the street life is lively and conditions are completely safe. Especially in the very late afternoon when lots of people are out mingling and talking to their neighbors. In order to explore Alfama, you need to walk. Preferably downhill, but the winding alleys will take you up and down like a slow motion roller coaster. Bring a map along for general reference, but don't try to follow it too closely. Alfama is a place to wander and follow your whimsy by turning whatever way looks best as you reach each corner. It's a small district where you cannot get very lost, and as long as you generally head downhill, you will easily get out at the bottom. Behind me is one of the bigger staircases in the Alfama, the Santa Helena staircase. And there's lots of little staircases and lots of little alleys. An amazing place. You could walk down this staircase from the viewing terrace called Santa Helena, which extends down from Portas do Sol and continues as Beco da Cardosa and other names as it changes its way and reaches finally the bottom of the hill at the main street of Rua de San Pedro. You could simply walk straight downhill through Alfama. It would only take you 15, 20 minutes to get from the castle at the top down to the river at the bottom if you just simply want to exit right out of the neighborhood. But then you'd be missing out on the quaint and authentic charm of this very special place. If you have the time and energy, continue meandering through this bewildering maze of Alfama to really explore this special neighborhood. This alley cat meows like a doorbell, trying to get back in the house. Rua São Miguel is one of the very special streets of this neighborhood. It's like the main street of Alfama. And it's not a steep one. It doesn't go up and down the hill. It's running more flat and parallel to the hill. So it's very easy to stroll along it. 
All the people on the street were locals. I didn't see any other tourists walking along, in fact, throughout the Alfama, especially late in the afternoon this way. You'll find yourself fitting in with these people who have lived here all their lives. It's a safe and family-oriented place where everybody knows each other and the generations mix together in a friendly way. You might want to stroll up one way and turn around and come back down the other. There's bars and restaurants here and tiny little shops and mostly it's a place for the locals to hang out, especially in the very late afternoon, early twilight as we're walking now. Folks have got the time and they're catching up with their neighbors. It's the best of that small town life in the middle of the big city. The residents find everything they need in this one small area. They can walk to the food store, they can walk to visit their neighbors. There's really no need to have a car. There's public transit that can get you into the city from here. It's a neighborhood where you can gracefully age in place and be surrounded by friends and family. So it's very easy to walk in along one narrow residential pedestrian lane and enjoy these ancient homes and facades and some colorful balconies and there's a few shops scattered here and there but it's still mostly a residential neighborhood it's comforting to know that there are still quiet places like this in the center of a european capital city where people take care they look out for each other it's a peaceful and safe neighborhood and everybody is getting along just great you've got a lot of different ethnic groups mixed in here already although it's mostly that native Portuguese stock who's been here for many generations. The life in these busy pedestrian lanes presents that rich mix of uses that modern urban planners are striving to reconstruct in our new cities. Another lovely street running parallel is San Pedro. It's just a block towards the river. And here too, you'll find a lively scene of shops and people out walking and a residential neighborhood. Of course, you'll find a mix of restaurants, some of them beautiful outdoor places on a plaza or a little hole in the wall, or maybe just go into a bar. There are quite a few kids living in Alfama with their families. This particular square was perfect for the kids to kick their ball around because with the confining walls, the ball couldn't go bouncing very far. Easy to keep the game going at a fever pitch. And some broad staircases that they'll turn into soccer fields. This young fellow is practicing his soccer at a broad, wide open staircase. Kind of a unique way to practice, like hitting tennis balls off a wall perhaps. He's kicking the soccer ball up the steps and the ball returns to him and he kicks it back up again, having a one-man game. Sometimes the ball gets away and bounces on down the steps. He's got to run down and chase after it. And they really don't have any green parks to play in, but there are some small squares and they've learned how to make the most of it. Of course, in such an old but dynamic neighborhood, you're going to see the past and the future combined in the blink of an eye. And here we see it with the grandma and the granddaughter and the older sister all playing out their parts. Notice the laptop computer Wi-Fi in the midst of this medieval lane. This is a lane that probably did not even have running water 40 years ago, but now it's pretty modern on the inside. The homes are comfortable enough and providing a launch pad for the next generation. Alfama is the oldest section of Lisbon, founded in the time of the Romans, or perhaps even earlier, and then given shape by the Arabs, who didn't make any urban plan, but just built alleys and homes as they were needed. And the more tangled the streets got, the better they liked it, because then it was a more effective defense mechanism to keep out the enemies who are going to get lost if they tried to find their way through these winding, tangled lanes. During the Middle Ages, it became the Jewish district, but after 1594, the Jews were evicted from Portugal, and the Alfama became home for sailors and fishermen. Later, some fine palaces were built, but they were mostly destroyed in the 1755 earthquake. 
after which the neighborhood was left again to the poor and working class. Humble homes sprang up in the crowded network of alleys and tiny plazas following the original jumble created by the Arabs. Today, this remains a working class neighborhood mixed with buildings from the inevitable gentrification of new money and yuppie redevelopment. The neighborhood is alive with locals who treat these lanes as their outdoor living rooms. Most of the homes are quite small, and so people naturally gravitate outside to chat with their neighbors, do their laundry, linger in the little markets, visit with friends, and catch up on stories. Everyone knows everything about each other in this small, self-contained community which has been here for generations. The loneliness and isolation of many modern cities is nowhere to be found in these charming, narrow old lanes. Because residents are so used to talking with everyone, you'll find they are extremely friendly people. Stop into some of the tiny bars and say, Bom dia! rather than hello because they don't speak much English up here. Some of the small bars have big jugs of wine they use to refill their customers' bottles. So you can bring your own bottle to the wine store and refill it out of one of these big barrels. It's very inexpensive and the wine is quite drinkable. Another activity for some of these kids is some dancing in the streets. These two girls are playing and practicing right out in front of their home. And they are just cutting it up here. Practicing, singing, dancing, having fun. Bye bye. We join up with our local guide, Isabel Nevis, who tells us some more about the Alfama. Here we have a square that is called St. Michael and this is considered to be one of the largest squares in Alfama. The streets are very narrow so the squares cannot be very big as well. The name of the square is São Miguel, meaning St. Michael, and that's the name of this church right here. So a lot of houses are being renovated, like this one here. So these buildings usually have one apartment per floor, but only when they are completely empty, they will renovate the whole building. Here in the corner, you can see one of the oldest houses we have in Alfama. And you can see that the top floors, the house is wider than in the ground floor and first floor. And this was a technique developed here in Lisbon in the late 15, beginning of the 16th century, where they were still having the city completely surrounded by walls. The population was growing. They needed bigger houses, more houses, but at the same time, they didn't want to make the streets even narrower. And if it was surrounded by walls, they could not expand. So they had the new houses at that time built like this, just bigger on the top. This way, the size of the street would not change, but you'll have some more rooms, a little bit more space on the top of the buildings. The streets are very narrow, winding streets, as I told you. Almost each house is facing a different direction because these are winding, small, crooked roads. All the houses were built exactly on the same place as the former ones, meaning that we have exactly the same plan as in the Middle Ages. The oldest houses we can find here are about five, dating back from the 16th century, so not damaged by the earthquake. All the others that were damaged, they were rebuilt or a new one were built in exactly on the same site of the original one. This city was completely surrounded by walls by the Arabs. The Portuguese kept it like that until the 16th century. Most of the walls were destroyed so that they could expand the city. But parts of the walls were kept like this one here, which is the original medieval wall. This one was not destroyed because there was one church up there that had been built against the wall. But the population now is really a mixture. We have very old people living here that inherited the houses from their, their ancestors. We have young people, we have students, we have foreigners who work in Lisbon or they are uh, working or studying in the university and they prefer to live here in this neighborhood than in the modern residential areas. So it's quite a, a big mixture of different people that really live all together in this neighborhood. And now we are going this way, please. 
Now we are going to continue our tour through this narrow street that has its name written there, Rua da Judiaria. Judiaria means Jewish section. So when Lisbon was only this uh, slope of the hill and completely surrounded by walls, the city was divided into neighborhoods. We had the Jewish section, the Christian section, the Muslim section. And when the city expanded outside the walls in the 16th century, the first to go were the wealthiest ones, no matter if they were Christian, Muslims or Jewish. So after the expansion of Lisbon, when the walls were uh, destroyed, so that we had no longer uh, different sections according to the religion, then they just mixture all over Lisbon. <laughs> there are a few hotels located in the Alfama. We picked one at the top of the hill, just a block from the castle, and it turned out to be a very nice spot to stay, a terrific home base for exploring the Alfama. Small hotel, a boutique property that's highly rated on TripAdvisor, very casual scene, a small dining area. They serve breakfast every day, but they don't have a restaurant for lunch or dinner. That's easy because there's plenty of restaurants out in the neighborhood. And after all, you want to get away from your hotel for, for lunch and for dinner, usually. So their breakfast is a very nice way to start the day. It's a self-service buffet, typical of a nice European full continental breakfast. Coffee, juice, rolls, yogurts. And there's a nice view out the window. There's a little garden. And the rooms are really quite lovely air-conditioned and many of them have got a dramatic view looking down across the hillside of Alfama towards the water. You can even see some of the cruise ships coming and going. This is after all a busy port for cruise ships. The name of the hotel is Solar dos Moros and it's just a few blocks from the castle right in the middle of Alfama. They only have 13 rooms one of them is a luxury suite, so you might want to inquire and book in advance if you'd like to stay in this little boutique hotel. They're located on a very quiet street in this mostly pedestrian neighborhood, so you're sure to get some rest in the evening and recharge the batteries for another busy day. There's lots more to see in Lisbon. There are a combination of factors that make Lisbon a very special European city to visit. It's relatively affordable. It has great history. The buildings are well preserved. They date back hundreds of years. And the city is rather compact. You can get across it easily in one hour. And it consists of a variety of diverse neighborhoods, ranging from the very old Alfama to the heart of town around Rocio Square called the Baixa, the master plan city from the mid 1700s. And then up on the other hill, you've got Bairro Alto, which is particularly attractive in the evening as the bars and restaurants come to life. On the edge of the city, you've got the famous Geronimo's Monastery and the Tower of Belém, which date back to the early 1500s, that great age of discovery when Portugal became one of the most powerful countries in the world. They discovered and owned Brazil and had large colonies in parts of Africa and India, Macau, and even Japan, where they established the city of Nagasaki for their trading purposes. It's no wonder they built some magnificent palaces, which you can visit on day trips out to some nearby areas, out to Sintra and Kashkes and Estoril, where you'll find palaces and gambling casinos and more of the old-fashioned quality of this part of Portugal. And the price is right. You can definitely get more for your money here in terms of hotel accommodations and food and even some shopping than you will find in some of the more famous cities of Europe. This total package makes it a great destination. At night, the Alfama comes alive with some restaurants that have outdoor sitting, and many of them provide this wonderful entertainment with the Fado Singers in the tradition of Portugal.
Sei que continuo errando, errando Continuo a ser Próprio do homem que eu sou Sei que continuo errando Errar continuo a ser Próprio do homem que eu sou At the very bottom, there is a series of larger restaurants that make for a very scenic spot to sit outdoors and have a meal at twilight. We have many more movies about Lisbon, which you can see on our YouTube channel. Well, as we dance our way out of here, we're going to leave you with more images of Alfama and some musical backdrop presenting the finale as a music video of sights and sounds of the old town of Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs>